Hey everyone, my name is Vedenin, and in this video we are going to have a look at how you can get a specific output format from an LLM. Here we are going to have a look at how you can get a, a JSON output from models such as Wama3 that doesn't natively support JSON output format. And in the first case we are going to be using the Grok API response format. But after that, I'm going to show you how you can pretty much integrate the approach that I use in order to get JSON with any open or not open model. I have a Google Co-op notebook in which I'm installing the Grok client library, Pedantic, and Langchain Core. These dependencies are going to be used throughout the different options that I'm going to show you. Uh, here are the list of imports. And uh, most importantly, here I'm uh, importing the base model from Pedantic and uh, I'm going to set the Grok API key and I'm going to choose and uh, set as a default the Wama 370B model from the Grok API. So a note about the model, unfortunately, smaller or lesser models uh, such as Wama 38B or uh, some of the uh, older or smaller Mistral models don't do very well when they don't support uh, JSON out of the box. So with some of the approaches that I'm going to show you, uh, it's really hard to get a valid JSON and only JSON response from uh, those models. So keep that in mind that you probably need to be working with a somewhat more powerful model, if you will. So the task that I'm going to show you is uh, pretty simple. I'm going to get one of my more recent tweets and uh, this is the tweet. And what I'm going to be asking from the LOMs is to score the tweet writing style based on uh, readability and uh, conciseness. So these are the two metrics that I want the model to judge the text that I'm going to pass in. And First, I'm going to initialize the Grok client. I'm going to be simply passing in the Grok API key right here. And I'm going to be asking the model to give me a response in two, two different formats, into JSON and into text. Fortunately, the Grok API supports a better version of asking the model to just give you a JSON instead of a plain text. So this is great. And I'm going to show you actually how I'm going to write this predict function uh, in which I'm going to be essentially adding a message, which will be the prompt. And if a system prompt is added, I'm going to be prepending that to the messages array. And then I'm going to be simply getting the call. I'm going to be calling the completions create uh, function. And here I'm going to be passing in the messages, the model that I'm passing in. And uh, keep in mind, again, this is just one at 370B, uh, very low temperature. And I'm going to be setting the type of JSON object if uh, JSON response format is requested as a parameter from the function. And then otherwise, I'm going to be uh, requesting just the text. And I'm going to be returning, uh, returning simply the first choice of message uh, that is returned by the API. And I'm going to be handling a lot of uh, the possible errors. Uh, this is pretty much taken from the Grok library as an example, so uh, you can have some of the responses if anything goes wrong. So here is how I will set up the case where the API or the model actually supports JSON response. It will be very easy. So what is recommended, at least within the Grok library, is to have a system prompt in which uh, you are going to be requesting that the outputs are going to be in a JSON format. And here I'm going to be passing in a sample uh, JSON response. So uh, this example is going to be an example of a one shot warning. And I'm going to be passing in the example that I want the response to be uh, similar to. And here is the system prompt uh, that you see. It's pretty much the same as in the string. And then I'm going to be asking for the prompt itself to evaluate the text. I'm going to be passing in the tweet text. And then I want the model to be evaluating the readability and the conciseness with values from zero, extremely bad, to extremely good, equal to 10. So this is essentially the prompt that I'm going to be passing in. And here is I'm going to be essentially calling with the prompt, system prompt, and the response format that I will require is going to be just JSON. So you can see that the Grok library, along with the 
models themselves is actually returning just a plain JSON. If you just output the response and everything seems to be working just great, but what happens if you are not actually using the Grok library and uh, if you actually don't use a model that supports JSON output uh, as a default case? So here I'm going to be expanding a bit on the idea that you can essentially get a text and after you get the text, you can uh, parse some parts of the text and remove some parts of the text. And then you have hopefully a valid JSON as an output. So what I'm going to do is to be actually creating a pedantic um, base, uh, extending from the base model from pedantic. And I'm going to be uh, actually creating the two fields readability and conciseness. So after that, I'm going to be essentially using what the lang chain library is using under the hood along with the Ragas library. This is uh, an example that I've pretty much taken from uh, their source codes. And here I'm going to be getting the schema, if you will, of the objects. And this schema is going to be just taking into account the types of the variables that I've created within the base model along with their names and uh, along with another object that says uh, the, which of the fields are required. And in this case, both of the fields are actually required in order to produce those types of objects. And after I get the properties and the required from the schema, as you can see here, I'm just dumping this into a prettier format. Actually, the Grok library client says that this is going to be helping a bit if you're just requesting the JSON output format. So probably they know something about the, uh, maybe they did some experiments whether or not prettier JSON is going to be beneficial to the LOM. And at least they're saying that this might be the case. And this again is taken from the Langchain parser output along with the Ragas library. Here, I'm just specifying a schema as an example, as you can see, again, one shot example I won't quit another short example of the schema that I'm going to be passing in and the important thing that I took from the Ragas library actually is to do not return any preamble or explanation I return only a pure JSON string surrounded by triple backticks this appears to be working very well at least with the 1370 billion parameter models and I'm going to show you uh, what is happening after you use something like this so in order to get the instruction from here, I'm going to be just replacing the schema here with the schema that I already had. And I'm going to be printing out uh, or formatting this. And uh, you see here, this is essentially the complete prompt that I'm going to be passing in as a uh, prompt to the, to the model via the API. And here I'm going to be essentially using this instruction as an end to the prompt, which is going to be the final prompt. And it is pretty simple to, pretty similar to what we had before. Evaluate the rating style from the text and then evaluate the readability with the exact same instructions. And then uh, again, I'm going to be passing in the JSON instruction at the bottom. So this is the complete prompt that you, I'm going to be using. It's a quite a wall of text actually, but it contains a very specific instructions of what I want from the LOM to return as a response along with uh, two examples and one negative example. Uh, here it says that the object properties is not well formatted, so it even gives you a formatted and not well formatted examples within the prompt. So I would say that this is very specific and again, in my experience, works pretty well, at least with large documents. So if you essentially run this large prompt through the Wama 3 model, at least for in this example, I'm getting just really the pure JSON along with the backticks, and those are pretty much very easy to remove. I'm going to be just stripping out the triple backticks and I'm going to be creating or loading this as a JSON. So essentially what I'm doing here is to load this part of the string since I've already removed those and those backticks from here. And then after that, uh, the writing score pedantic object uh, inherits a parse object method. And within that, uh, you can see that uh, you can pass in 
the JSON, which is essentially a dictionary now, since it is loaded. And this is the typed response that you can get from the LLM, which is pretty cool. And uh, what I did here for you is to give you essentially this JSON output parser, which is, I would say, pretty generic, of course. Uh, and essentially what is happening here is that I'm using uh, the generic typing along with something that should inherit from the base model. And I'm going to be passing in the pedantic object. This is a very similar interface to what you have within the pedantic out parser from the lang chain that we're going to be using in a bit as well. And what is happening after that is I'm just taking this code right here, parsing uh, everything uh, that has backticks and then converting this using a parse object to uh, from the response and returning that. Maybe I should also give you a return type here. Probably I'll fix that. And uh, to use this parser, uh, the interface is pretty simple. You're just passing in a pedantic object and then parsing the response from the LOM. And this, again, is going to be giving you this writing score with the readability and conciseness. Uh, which is pretty cool. It is, uh, I would say, pretty generic, if you will. And another option that I probably uh, go, I'm going to be using uh, if I'm using Langchain, so for example, when I'm using QAI or uh, just Langchain, under the hood, the pedantic output parser is one of the components that is used if some of the chains or agents, etc., are required to get some JSON. And one of the cool parts about this pedantic output parser is that you can essentially use it for free from the library, so you don't have to implement anything. And uh, the interface, again, I pretty much took the interface from here and I uh, written it with a bit more simpler to understand what is happening under the hood within our own JSON output parser. But again, the interface is the same, parse and give you the readability and the conciseness. One of the cool things about the Langchain parser, and if you're using it right within Langchain, is that they can also call an LOM if you have passed an LOM to uh, some of the chains. And actually, those LOMs are uh, having internal instructions or prompts to fix if the JSON is uh, actually invalid or probably some parts of the outputs are not JSON. And if their parsing fail, Essentially, what they do is to call the LOM again and uh, ask it to fix the JSON. So you probably have a higher chance of getting the correct JSON format from something like Langchain. So this is it for this video. We've seen how you can get a JSON output from an LOM that supports it and from LOMs that can just return just a text. And after you get the text, how you can parse essentially the JSON and get a dictionary that you can use right or throughout your application. We've also seen that you can use the Langchain's pedantic output parser in order to pretty much do the same thing. And you can essentially go with the JSON and continue to use that throughout your applications. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, join the Discord channel that I'm going to link down into the description of the video. And if you want to follow along and get the source code, please consider subscribing to ML Expert Pro. I'm going to link a full tutorial along with the Google Co-op Notebook within the first comment of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.